Hey everyone, welcome. Um, I hope that uh, everybody can hear me. We're doing this a little bit different than we've done uh, live stream things here at the church in the past. Um, I am uh, uh, joined in the next little alcove area uh, by Sebastian Kaur, who's our, uh, our youth ministry intern uh, for kind of the end of this summer and ramping up into uh, our RE programming this fall. So he's gonna be joining us and kind of giving us um, some information as well. I want to start out by saying thank you uh, for taking out uh, a chunk of your day. I know this is family time and dinner time, stuff like that. It's hard to find time for us to all kind of get together, even virtually, and uh, and and get some things accomplished. So I want to start out by saying thank you for your time and uh, for your continued support of our uh, of our youth ministry programs. Um, like I said in the chat, we're going to be getting started in, in just a couple minutes uh, with an opening prayer. I want to give everybody time to get um, to get logged on. I know that Zoom is. It's still new for some folks, and, and we want to make sure that uh, everybody has that opportunity to, uh, to get everything. If you do miss something in the meeting, if you do miss some information, uh, we will be, um, this is being recorded right now, and we will be um, posting that on our Vimeo page, and we'll link that to our Facebook pages and the Youth Ministry website so that you'll, you'll be able to have that. We should have that up uh, maybe like sometime tomorrow, um, early, early tomorrow. So um, I want to say, Again, thank you for joining us, and uh, I hope you're excited about uh, what's going to be an interesting but really fun, hopefully, uh, youth ministry year. And uh, it's awesome to see so many teens on online as well. There's there's several of you uh, online. Um, you know, parents, you're you're awesome, uh, and you know, uh, showing showing your support. Um, but the the teens being on is, is is very cool. So so thank you very much, teens, for for taking on yet another Zoom meeting or Zoom class, almost as uh, as, as I'm sure you all are probably getting sick of doing by, by this point. So, um, okay. I'm gonna get started by sharing my screen here um, and just giving you a little bit of an idea of what we're gonna do um, this evening and then we'll begin in prayer. Let's see, where'd you all go? There we go. Okay, all right, so uh, this evening we will be um, talking about, it looks like a long list of things, I promise it's not. We're gonna try to get you all out of here by 6.45 or seven uh, at the very latest. Um, I, uh, I want to, uh, obviously to start off in prayer and to kind of uh, you know, talk about what's been going on um, this summer, we're gonna get into our themes for the RE year and, and make sure that uh, everyone is, um, is just kind of aware of what we're going to be talking about and the, the kind of the, the mission that we're going to be on uh, this year in, in both EDGE and IMPACT, so that's middle school and high school programming. I'm going to talk a little bit about our challenges right now. Uh, we've got some challenges going on, as you well know, with COVID-19 and so many other things going on. How's that going to affect uh, what our youth ministry programs look like? Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, each kind of flagship program, the high school program and the middle school program. Parents, uh, we, you know, we need volunteers. We need you all to, to, uh, to make our programs be the best that they can be. Um, it's, it's not the same without you, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. I will try to answer some questions about confirmation. We don't have a ton of information, but that's usually where a lot of our parent questions come from, is confirmation. It is such a different process and a different year. And then we'll talk a little bit about our extracurriculars and kind of what we can expect from the year. Um, there's not going to be, um, we don't have a ton of information on that stuff, but uh, the window, you know, some windows are open uh, for doing some different things um, uh, throughout uh, throughout the rest of this year. Um, I'm 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 joined, if you can see me, uh, by some saints. Where Sebastian and I are both here in the church. We thought it'd be kind of cool to come to you from the church. Uh, Sebastian's in the very cool. It's actually a reliquary. Like we can really call it a reliquary because it's got exposed relics in it, which is super awesome. So if you, ha if you haven't been by there. Uh, it's behind the Mary statue, the Sacred Heart. Of, uh, I'm sorry, the Immaculate Heart of Mary statue uh, in the in the church. Um, and then I'm uh, flanked by all of those wonderful people: Saint Peter, Mary Magdalene, uh, Saint John the Baptist, Saint Thomas. Right, they're all they're all pretty cool. Those are all pretty cool people. Um, so we're going to ask for their prayers and um, 
and uh, and their blessings on our, uh, our, 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 not only our meeting, but our, our, our youth ministry year. So let's begin uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this time and for this wonderful opportunity to again enter more deeply into your presence throughout this entire year as we embark on uh, another year of youth ministry. Lord, we pray that you would help us, help our teens, help our families uh, to grow more deeply in faith and in love with you. Lord, we know that you are there for us. We know that you are calling us, uh, calling us home, Lord, calling us more deeply, more profoundly into a relationship with you. And so uh, here at the, at the beginning of our, of our new year, we say yes to that relationship. And Lord, we, um, we ask that you would help us to remember uh, that even in these, these trying and difficult and strange times, uh, that you are with us and you are with us uh, joyfully and happily, and that you come to us, uh, this, this grace that you bless us with um, is, is, is something to be grateful for. Uh, this, these trials that you, you, you see us through, Lord, that there's something to be grateful for. So Lord, we, we pray that you would help us to increase um, our, our awareness of you, uh, and especially, Lord, our, our gratitude for the many blessings that we have and for the ways that you're continuously encouraging us to grow. Mother Mary, we consecrate this time to you. Uh, we're, we're so thankful uh, for your motherhood of Christ, um, just like we're thankful for the, the motherhood and the fatherhood of all of, our, of all of our parents, all of our volunteers, all of those that pass on the faith. We consecrate this time to you, knowing that, uh, that you will be with us this entire time as well, that you'll be uh, interceding with us uh, to your Son as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, I got to let some folks into the waiting room. There we go. Um, all right. Cool. All right. Um, okay, so once again, welcome. We are uh, we're really, really excited about uh, the things that we've been working on and, and planning. Um, you know, last year was uh, was a lot of fun. We talked about uh, kind of being um, we talked about being fearless. Our, our theme last year was fearless, and and it got uh, it got really um, uh, applicable, right? It became something that was very practical uh, as especially the spring semester went on. There were a lot of things to be afraid of, a lot of things to be worried about, and um, and so this year um, we're we're you know we're going to kind of take a step in a in a different direction for both. Uh, high school and middle school. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, last year didn't end the way we wanted it to. We didn't get to have a confirmation retreat. Uh, we didn't get to do, you know, we didn't get to have a mission trip in the summer. Uh, we didn't do a lot of the, the fun extracurricular stuff um, that we usually do. And and so um, we're trying to to adapt this year. Um, our our goal this year is to not make uh, meetings and events like this feel like school. So I, I really, really don't want things to feel like school for, for your teens or even for you parents that are, that are spending all day uh, on a computer from your, from your home office or from your couch or whatever. Um, I don't want it to feel like work, right? Uh, we do want things to be engaging and exciting. So we're, we're, we're working on that um, and, and working, to make that, uh, working to make that more of a reality. Um, one thing that I really learned last year, one thing that, that – kind of struck me as, um, as an opportunity and as something really exciting to think about coming into a new uh, youth ministry year um, is, is the reasons uh, for, for your teens' engagement in, in the faith, right? And, and the reasons why um, they, either, they either stay engaged or maybe they drift away from, uh, from the practice of their faith. And, and one of the things that really... Um, that really hit home with me last year was, was maybe the idea that uh, our, our teens are so, um, they're, they're, they're so um, intelligent. They're so, um, they're, they're in, in, inundated with information. They, they have so much information at their fingertips. And a lot of them are kind of left wondering um, these, these deep, really kind of philosophical questions, like, like very foundational, fundamental questions about their faith. And so we talk a lot about, um, you know, 
does God really exist? And, and does God really love me? And is God really there? And there were a lot of, uh, a lot of questions kind of surrounding those, those themes, right? And um, so we're going to talk a lot about that this year. Um, and we're also going to you know, really work to make the experience of God a personal one. If you're going to church and that experience is not personal, that experience is not, um, if it feels like you're watching a play or if it feels like you're watching a movie, right? But maybe it's a really boring movie that you're not really into. It's just like, you know, the movie of the week or something and you're not, you're not really into it. Um, you know, we, we want to fix that. We want to work on that. We want to, to get um, not only our teens, but our families and our, and our parish really excited about experiencing a connection with Christ. Uh, not just on Sundays, but, but like every day. What if, what if we experience that connection with him all the time? Um, and, and so that's, that's just some things that we're kind of thinking about as we move, as we move in, into the year. And that, that kind of being said, um, I want to get into to our themes uh, for 2020, 2021, kind of talk about those. Um, this is for, for uh, middle school and high school. I don't remember which slide I had first. Um, I'm going to take the high school one, and then I'm going to turn it over to Sebastian to talk about middle school. Um, okay, yeah, so this is, this is the high school one. So we, we're doing something different this year in that high school gets one theme and middle school gets another, uh, a different theme. That's something totally new. We've never really done that. So, um, so this, is our, this is our theme for, um, uh, for impact this year, for our high school program this year. Uh, this is uh, from the first letter of John, chapter one, verse five. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. And so, to, to me, it's not a, a huge leap uh, to see, you know, when, when Saint Paul tells us to put on Christ, right? When we're when we're called to kind of be that um, that example of Christ out in the world, and to be that example of God's love out, out in the world, it means that we have to be light as well. Uh, that means that that in us. Um, we've got to get rid of as much of that darkness as we can and, and, and embrace that light and love of God and really, really shine, right? Really kind of be like a, like a prism, right? Like this transparent instrument of God that, that, that kind of radiates his love and, and expands um, uh, his, his, his kingdom, right? That, that builds and grows his, his kingdom. So that's going, to be, um, that's going to be not only the theme, but kind of the challenge for this year, right? Is how can we how can we not only prepare ourselves to do that, but, but are there opportunities where we can go do that? Are there opportunities right now when we're in this sort of post-quarantine strange life that we're in, okay? Um, how are we going to shine? Uh, so all of, you, uh, all of you high school students, and even you middle school students as well that are, that are kind of here, that are, that are watching, you know, um, how, are, how, are you, how do you shine? What are, what, are, what are some of the good things happening in your life? Where does it, where do you feel you know, positivity and love and God's, God's grace kind of working in your life. And how can you, um, how can you take that grace and be, be this amplifier that, that, that shows it off to the whole world, that, that blesses other people with it, that allows God to work through you. We're going to talk about that a lot this year. Um, we're going to do that in, in, you know, kind of a cool way. We're going to really focus on establishing a relationship with God. And if you or maybe a Catholic like I was when I was 17 or 18 that just kind of goes through the motions and shows up to church. Um, we can talk about how you can become friends, like, like, like nickname kind of friends, BFFs with, with Jesus, with Mary, with the saints, um, with God the Father, with the Holy Spirit, and, and how, that, uh, how that just radically changes not only our lives, but it, it changes the world. All right. Um, I'm going to pass things on to uh, our, our, again, our, in, our intern, Sebastian. Um, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about the middle school thing. All right, guys. Um, so the, the theme for EDGE this year is redeemed. And we're basing that off of Zechariah 8, um, which is about God renewing the people of Jerusalem and the people of Jerusalem living according to their renewed status as covenant people. Um, and so this is really to go with what's going on in today's world and how we can, like James said, have a relationship with God and, and kind of start, start fresh, um, you know, and, and have that, that redeemed relationship with God um, while learning about the people of Jerusalem and their relationship with God throughout the entire year.
All right. So, uh, so big. Um, those are big things to 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 think about, and and you know, big big concepts, and, and that's exciting. We have uh, a, a lot of really wonderful teens and families that I think are eager to grow in their faith and eager to share their faith, and so um, you know, these big concepts are hopefully to you. Uh, they're certainly exciting to me. I know they're exciting to Sebastian. Um, hopefully, they're they're really exciting to you as well. And and uh, I, I'm really excited to see what. Um, what the year brings. I'm saying the word excited a lot. I'm going to try to grow my vocabulary in my brain a little bit uh, and use a different word. Um, I'm thrilled. There, that's a good one. Okay. All right. Um, I forgot what's next on the agenda, so we're going to go back. Um, all right. Uh, COVID-19 challenges and protocols. Um, we are, uh, we're in a strange place in a strange time. Um, I would actually just found out today and kind of confirmed today that our youth ministry programs uh, for high school, at least for this fall semester, uh, are going to be hybrid. Now, middle school um, it will be virtual um, because it's going to be on Wednesday nights. So we're going to we're going to keep that. Um, those programs will be virtual only unless unless otherwise advertised. We'll have some different things that happen throughout the year for middle for middle schoolers. where We invite you to come if you're comfortable with doing that. Um, but high school. It's going to be hybrid. You're going to have your choice. You can come in person and we'll be in the pack and we'll, you know, eat dinner and do kind of those different things that we've done in the past. Um, or you're more than welcome to, to join us from home if that's what you're, you're more comfortable doing, if that's what your family is more comfortable doing. And so um, I, I, would, uh, I would encourage you to kind of think about that if you're a high schooler. Be thinking about kind of what, um, what you want to do. Maybe it's a week-to-week -week thing for you and you're like, Hey, I can I can get there at six this week, or I've got a lot of homework, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stay present to, um, you know, impact going on or whatever virtually. Um, that's totally up to you. Now, parents, uh, I know some of you parents are probably thinking, you know, what is that? What does that really look like? Um, if you've been to mass and you've noticed the socially distanced seating arrangement, uh, you've noticed the the enforcement of mask wearing and and making sure that everybody has access to like hand sanitizer and and things like that, that's the exact same thing that'll kind of go on in the pack. Um, we will have a limited capacity. So if all 150 of our high school teens show up at the same time, um, we'll have to figure out something else to do. That's my job, don't worry about it, right? Um, it'll, that would be super fun. I would love to have that problem. <laughs> um, but, uh, but in the meantime, uh, you know, the, the teens that, that, do, um, that do show up, uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna make the room as cozy as we can and as per, you know, personal as, as we can, personal feeling as we can, um, without interrupting those, those socially distant protocols. Um, parents, you know, this is kind of getting ahead, but parents, we need, we need your help with that. Um, we, we, we're gonna need to, um, to figure out some ways to make, uh, to make meal teams um, work, right? And, and I've already you know, kind of discussed that with a, with a few of you. Um, but the more people that we have kind of working together uh, on those things, uh, the, the better off we're, we're, we're going to be. There is going to be, uh, you know, a learning curve checked in with other parishes whose programs have already started. And there's, you know, there's different, there's different lessons to learn. All right. So um, if you have any specific concerns uh, about COVID, uh, certainly we'll be paying attention to, you know, the, the diocesan protocols and, and of course the the uh, you know Williamson County and statewide protocols as well, um, you know, kind of taking taking direction from those from those offices. Um, you, you may have noticed we're we're expanding our our, our mass schedule, right, and and kind of kind of flirting with with getting back to a little bit more of a, a pre-COVID schedule um, at not only our parish but all the all the parishes in our deanery and, and, and in our diocese are are, are doing that. So there's going to be um, you know, some, some growing pains as we kind of move back uh, into, um, into hopefully a more normal sense of things. Um, parents, again, if you have any concerns, please email me, please email Josie. Um, let us know, you know, where there are opportunities for us to be safer. Um, you know, this is not, we're, we're, we're not perfectly set up for this, so we need uh, as much help as we can get, and we're totally open to that help. Um, all right, so I've actually asked Sebastian to um, to talk a little bit about his experience uh, at Impact. Uh, for for those for those of you um, you know teens that are on that are listening, parents that are on that are, that are listening, I really encourage you to um, 
to, to, you know, to, to listen up. I'm going to stop sharing here for a second. Um, I'm going to really, you know, just encourage you to listen up and, and uh, just kind of take to heart. So, you know, Sebastian's going to share a little bit of his experience and, and his story um, kind of coming up through, through youth ministry here at, at St. Vincent de Paul. Go ahead, Sebastian. So um, Impact has actually been a really great experience for me here at St. Vincent de Paul. Um, while we do have a lot of fun with games and, and praise and worship and things like that, um, we also do um, small groups and adoration and things like that, things that um, really, really help you deepen your relationship with God. Um, and then, of course, um, if once you're confirmed, um, you can be on Ember team at, at um, Impact and um, help lead small groups, help plan lessons, help plan events, retreats, things like that. Um, but it's, I mean, not only is, is it a ton of fun, but you, you, you learn things about yourself and you learn things about God and you learn things about your relationship with him. And, and it, it's, it's like every impact meeting, you, you deepen that relationship and it's really, really moving. All right. Um, thank you so much, Sebastian, for, for sharing. Um, yeah, we, we, we really try to be, uh, you know, we try to be dynamic at Impact and, and to, um, to relate the faith, right? We're not just passing on the faith and saying, you have to do this, right? We're, we're trying to make the faith relatable to our, to our teenagers. And, and if I can kind of segue that, um, that's really the most important in middle school. I know that sounds really weird, um, but it is the most important uh, in middle school for us to um, uh, for us to get our to get our young people excited about a relationship with Jesus Christ and a relationship with the church and a relationship with the sacraments, those kind of things. So um, I want to I want to share a little bit with you about my experience at Edge last year, and that may sound weird. Um, I went into the year, uh, um, we, we, we had a full complement of, um, of middle school catechists, right? And um, shortly before um, middle school kind of kicked off last year, uh, um, a, a catechist um, came to me and said, hey, I've got some family stuff going on. Uh, I really don't think that I can commit to a full year. And then that conversation turned into, I've, I've got to kind of take care of a family member, I, I can't really be there at all, right? And, and so I was um, very, you know, happily kind of excited uh, to be leading a, um, leading a class uh, of middle schoolers, right? The, the class, once, you know, once I kind of dug into like the schedule, I realized that my class of middle schoolers was a class of eighth grade girls, okay? Um, that was as terrifying as it sounded. I'm going to say that again eighth grade girls, right? It was a little bit scary. It was a, uh, actually kind of a lot scary sometimes, um, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, what it turned into for me was this, uh, this opportunity to, um, to kind of practice how to, how to talk about God and how to talk about my faith, um, maybe with people that I, that I don't necessarily relate to all the time. And to see, not only to see Christ in them, uh, but to see the need for Christ in in people that are not, um, you know, I'm, I'm used to talking to high schoolers, right? I'm uh, with middle school. I was kind of more of a coordinator, and so uh, getting to to hear about the things that they care about, and getting to to kind of notice the things that um, that they that they love, right? And learning to love those things myself, right, um, was a really really eye opening opportunity. I learned so much about my faith just from being in the classroom with them once a week, and so I know that that our um, our edge program, uh, even though it, it does feel sometimes um, not as big as impact, is not supposed to. Right? You should we we we're we're focusing on kind of learning stuff when we're in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, but it was really, really powerful for me in terms of establishing a, a, a deepening my relationship with God and, and deepening my relationship in the context of this, you know, this classroom full of eighth grade girls and another, you know, another 
co-leader with me. It was, it was a really, really cool thing to do and, and to experience. So um, that's a pitch for, for Edge, right? Uh, you know, to get excited about your, your, your middle school virtual class. And it's also a pitch for anyone who's, um, who's looking to share their faith and maybe to grow in their faith a little bit as a, as a, as a volunteer. Um, all right. So as we, uh, as we move on um, in our, our meeting here, um, I do want to um, do want to take a kind of a quick break from our agenda and show you. Let's see. Sorry. I want to show you our our website. Uh, we've still got a little bit of work to do on the website, but it's um, it's getting uh, it's getting there. Okay. So this is our youth ministry website for 2020 2021. Um, this is svdpaustinyouth.com. Um, and we've got um, we've got information uh, here for um, sixth through twelfth grade programming, right? Uh, including confirmation. Some of these links you go and it'll it'll say like coming soon, or there might not be anything there yet. Um, we'll kind of talk about that. Um, we've got some information about our themes and and you know, the different things that we're going to talk about for the year. Um, and then we've got kind of a bit about each of our each of our programs. Okay, so. Um, what I what I really encourage you to do is to to go to the website, um, you know, check out uh, um, some of the different things that we offer. Um, parents, uh, we we need you. We really do. And so if you're if you're a parent who is at all inclined um, to help out with youth ministry, whether that's as a meal team leader, as a small group leader, um, you want to help out with retreats. If you want to you want to donate some money. Um, Whatever you want to do, whatever God is kind of putting on your heart to do, I would love to talk to you about that. I would love to talk to you about your um, your particular ministry and how your ministry can can really change the world. It can change minds. It can change hearts. Even if it's from the back of the room, I'm not going to call anyone out, but I know that there are are um, are core team members, former core team members, and current core team members on this meeting, parents on this meeting that. They started out being someone that just hung out in the back of the room, and by the middle of the fall semester, they were best friends with a bunch of 11th graders, right? And that sounds weird, but it's so much fun, and you will have uh, you will have a blast if you get uh, get involved with either Impact or or Edge. All right. So I'm just going to show you how to drop me a line, right? This is really kind of the one thing that I wanted to kind of navigate through. Um, so uh, this is our home page, right? We're home. Um, you can click on volunteers if you like or you can go down here um, where it says core team adult and parent leadership ministry you can click read more oh, oh it goes to the wrong page see website isn't perfect so you gotta go to volunteers never mind go to volunteers all right um core team and volunteers uh guys we're 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 all about sharing the gospel we're all about saying yes to to that call of discipleship um and so if you feel called to called to serve uh just go to this Go to this email um, uh, uh, like email form here and just drop me a line or just email me if you already have my email if you're even you can even reply to one of the one of the youth ministry emails that, that you're getting um, but we are taking some time to make a pitch for volunteers we need uh, as as many as we can get um, for things like you know and, and even if you want to be a virtual volunteer that's a new thing right um, you, there's certainly um, uh, opportunities to to volunteer in the virtual space and to lead a, a virtual small group things like that. So we can talk about all that. Um, if you're if you're willing, I know we've contacted uh, a lot of volunteers from the previous year. Um, if we haven't contacted you, that's on me. That's kind of uh, what I'm doing this week. Um, but we have a a virtual meeting for both Ember Team, which is our, our teen leadership ministry, and Core Team. Um, that'll be this Sunday at 3 p.m. on Zoom. All right, we'll be sending out a link for that um, this Sunday at 3 p.m. So if you can make that meeting, um, that's great. Even if you can just make part of it, even if you just want to hang out and listen and like, you know, while you're doing laundry or something, you can listen to listen to our, our Ember team and core team training. That would be fantastic. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, before we... Um, Before we move into um, to 
confirmation and, and talking about that. Um, I want to I want to make sure that everyone. Um, let's see if I can do this real quick. Everyone has an opportunity to ask any questions uh, that you might have. Um, if you do have um, if you do have questions, please. Uh, please just drop those into the chat feature, um, the, Zoom, the Zoom group chat feature. Um, you can direct them to me or, or direct them to me and Sebastian, um, and I'll, I'll try to get those answered. Um, after we talk about confirmation and extracurriculars, we'll, we'll try to answer any questions that you might have. So if you've been thinking about a question, uh, feel free to drop that into the Zoom group chat. Okay, let's see. Okay. All right. Um, I just want to show you the, the homepage here again, once again, on the, on the website. Um, a lot of you have registered. We've got about 45, 50 teens registered, which is, is, you, is that's actually kind of like pretty good for this time. Um, usually we register about half of you before classes start and about half after classes start. Um, but if you if you haven't registered, you can go to our website and click here to register. You can go to the St. Vincent de Paul svdpparish.org website as well and register there. There's a link there. Um, please, please, please register, especially right now. Um, that's it makes our life a lot easier uh, in terms of communication um, because, like right now, I have no way of looking out at the crowd on Zoom and and knowing who's here, right? I, I can't really do that until after uh, the meeting is over. Um, so registering just kind of helps us to know who we're communicating with and how many teens we're engaging with uh, at any given time, even before the year starts. Uh, so I just want to make that little, a little pitch for registration. I promise I won't, um, I won't spam you too much uh, once you, you know, once the, the semester kind of gets, kind of gets rolling. Okay. All right. Um, Okay. All right, let's talk just a little bit about confirmation. Um, I know we have some confirmation parents. Um, uh, we, uh, we are um, still waiting, you know, Confirmation is kind of a complicated thing for the diocese to schedule. The bishop wants to be present at as many confirmations as possible. Um, so it is kind of up to his schedule, right? All of our dates that we've requested uh, are in May, okay? With the, it's pretty much, um, you know, every weekend with the exception of, of Mother's Day, Sunday. Um, we've we've re requested all of those dates. So more than likely, um, like 90% likely, we will get one of those days in May. So confirmation will happen in May, which means that prep classes will start in January, okay? Um, we will have, uh, we've been told by the diocese, we'll have a definitive answer as to the calendar uh, sometime in mid-November. Um, so mid to late November, be looking for, you know, some emails if, if things aren't coming out from the diocese on time, which has happened before. Um, I'll do my best to try to keep you all updated as I know things uh, and as we, as we hear things here at the parish. Um, it's not always the easiest, uh, the easiest thing to do, right? Because there, there are a lot of, a lot of variables just in, in getting everybody on the calendar. So, um, so bear with us on that. We, we do, uh, when that information comes out in November, I am really excited. We've got a new confirmation program that we're working with this year. Um, it looks really cool. Uh, it's, it's kind of based on, um, you, there's, a, there's definitely a, a lot of in-person in elements and a, a lot of traditional elements, um, but you can do it all through your phone which is amazing to me. Um, it just kind of blows my mind. Uh, lessons and meetings and everything can kind of happen through your phone, um, which is really cool. So, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, get excited about that. Once again, those, the classes themselves, uh, meetings, whether virtual or in person, depending on what's going on, will start in January um, and we'll be confirming in May. We're, we're, we haven't made a decision yet as to whether or not we'll have a retreat or what that's going to look like. Um, I can tell you this though, and this will probably influence our, 
our decision-making process uh, for that. Um, the Diocese of Austin will be offering DCYC, uh, but it'll be a one-day event, right? It'll be a socially distant one-day event. Um, we're going to kind of look at that and see how that goes and, and kind of apply uh, lessons learned from there and some other events to our confirmation prep and to some other springtime events that we would, we would normally have. All right. Um, so if you have any more questions about confirmation, feel free to email me. Feel free to list them here. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Extracurriculars. Uh, we, we have um, uh, this really, really awesome Bible study uh, that's been happening um, for about a year now called Summit. Um, kind of uh, our, our, our attendance for that, you know, kind of ebbs and flows. Um, we're going to take the next two weeks off. I know that you, that I told you all, uh, last week that we would be um, coming back to Summit this Thursday, tomorrow. Uh, but the next two Thursdays, we're actually going to take off. We need some time to kind of do some planning and, and things like that. So, um, so Summit will return uh, on October 8th, right? Um, that's the day after the first EDGE class, the first middle school class, uh, which is on October 7th, Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m., um, so, so that's really the only extracurricular that we have planned right now. Um, ideally, we'll have some, some time uh, and some opportunities on the calendar to kind of go and do different things. Um, but again, uh, this, this fall semester, that's going to be tough to do. So um, as different virtual opportunities pop up, we'll be, we'll be informing parents. And, and like I said, uh, once we kind of get our feet under us um, with um, making a return to in-person programming, Certainly, there will be more, more opportunities for, for extracurricular stuff. Um, so I've got a question here. Uh, it says, is there a class, a class calendar posted? So um, a class calendar uh, is not posted yet, uh, but it is pretty close. It's like, it's like this close uh, to being posted, um, and that'll be posted on our, our youth website under calendar, right? So what you're seeing there right now is kind of the standard Google calendar, um, the class calendar that will have uh, as much information as we have on it um, will be going out Sunday. So, so that'll be out Sunday. Um, what day and time uh, are the virtual meetings for EDGE? Uh, so EDGE meets on Wednesdays uh, at 6 p.m. from 6 to 7, uh, and the meetings will all be virtual uh, until further notice, okay, or, or until we, we advertise differently. Um, what I would really encourage you to do uh, for your uh, for your um, teens on, on EDGE, and, and I know... Uh, any middle school teens, you might roll your eyes when I say this. Um, parents, feel free to join in on those meetings, okay? Um, and I'm not saying that because I want you to like sit there and babysit your your kid. Um, but a big part of what uh, big part of what happens at Edge is is like the, the the teens get to kind of take in the information and talk about it and talk about it on their level. And so having someone there to share with. Um, is really important. Right? We're going to try to do that in the virtual space, but uh, having someone right there that when you, when you close the laptop, when the lesson's over, you know, those, so, you know, sometimes those questions come out, and that's a great opportunity for, um, for teens and, and mom and dad to, to, to talk a little bit. Okay. Um, if anybody's got any other questions, uh, now, is, now is a great time. Um, I, I know that this year has been... Um, uh, it's been kind of a whirlwind for parents. It's been a whirlwind for, for teachers and schools and, and for teens, certainly, uh, everybody going back to school. I appreciate your patience with us as we kind of uh, get things figured out, and I appreciate your excitement just kind of showing up to, uh, you know, showing up to this meeting and, and, and making it a, making it a, a priority on a, on a Wednesday evening. Um, I'm really, really excited, um, you know, for – the opportunities that are coming uh, in this, even in this crazy time. Um, we just got a question, are there any plans for an Adore Night maybe in the spring? It might be even sooner than the spring. There's definitely plans for adoration. Um, and we're kind of talking with Father Ed about uh, some creative ways to get as many people in the parish involved uh, for an adoration night. Once we kind of, once we have those plans finalized, um, we're going to make it happen. Uh, it, it'll probably happen sometime in November. Um, we definitely, I already have two uh, adore nights on the schedule um, for the spring semester that'll be coming out, uh, coming out on Sunday. So uh, that is, that is definitely happening. If you don't know what a door is, it's awesome. Uh, it's 
it's exposition, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Um, there's usually some, some praise and worship. Sometimes there's a guest speaker. Um, sometimes it's just like silence. He doesn't love silence. I love silence. It's just, it's amazing, right? Sometimes it's just sitting before the Lord and, and adoring, right? Just adoring him uh, and letting him adore you, which is really cool. So uh, that's a great question. And we, we definitely have plans to, um, to spend some quality time with Jesus in, in the Blessed Sacrament. High school students. Okay, so will high school students meet on Wednesday nights too? Sorry if that wasn't clear. Uh, hi, all of our high school pro programming is on Sunday nights. So um, it would be, uh, our, our Sunday night programming has already, always been from six to eight. Um, right now we're looking at a schedule that is from six to about 7.30, right? It might go a little longer than that in person, uh, but more than likely that um, the virtual time will be be closer to an hour, an hour and a half. We don't want to spend much more time than that. Uh, you know, virtually, that's that's tough. So, um, uh, but that, those will be on, on on Sunday nights as well. And eventually, when the 5 p.m. mass does come back, uh, and that that is kind of a goal down the road. Um, again, we want to be, uh, you know, in, in encouraging our teens and families to you know to attend that mass together, and then to come over to the pack um, to to enjoy some fun and games and youth ministry and, and catechesis and all of that, all of that good stuff. I don't know how I muted myself right then, but I did. That was weird. Okay. Technology. It's fun. Okay. So um, if there aren't any, any more questions, uh, I will, um, I'm going to hand it over to Sebastian to close this in prayer. And uh, again, I want to say thank you on behalf of, of Father Ed and the staff and, and um, you know, just our, our core team and Ember team just for, just for you all being so patient, being so awesome um, throughout this, this last, you know, eight months or so. It's been, been really weird and we've been really trying to, uh, to, um, to, to, to figure the weird, the weirdness out, right? Super cool. So um, I, I, I do feel kind of, kind of like empowered, right? Like it's cool. It's exciting to me that St. Francis of Assisi had to preach during the plague, right? Like he had to, he had to, he had to be aware of that, you know, um, that kind of stuff, you know, Maximilian Kolbe had to be a saint during World War II, during the Holocaust, right? So, so for us to have the opportunity to, to like carry a cross this way and to, to figure out, you know, how do we, how do we stay strong in our faith? Um, it's such a, it's such a cool opportunity. It's such a cool thing. So, um, so, so thank you all for, for, for joining us in that. If there's anything else that I can do as far as answering questions, um, anything like that, please don't hesitate to text me or email me. My information is at the bottom of every, every email that, that gets sent out. All right. Um, Sebastian, I'm going to, turn it over to you to, uh, to close us in prayer. Awesome. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all together today. Um, pray that you please be with all of our students, all of our, our parents, all of our volunteers, and that you help us to have a great year. Um, pray that you... you help deepen our relationship with, with each and every one of us. Um, we thank you for all of the many blessings that you give us every single day. Lord, we pray for everything going on in the world, that you please be with us. You help us, guide us, and give us strength. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One more time. Sebastian is sitting in front of relics of uh, St. Saint, Saint Louise de Marillac, St. Vincent de Paul, and St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Those are first-class relics. I don't know why that this place isn't like full of pilgrims all the time. They're first-class relics, so exposed pieces of their body, like bones, right, um, that are on display in our, in our church. Um, really doesn't happen too often unless, it's, unless you're at church. Like, uh, you know, churches in Europe have lots of relics. We typically over here in the States do not. So it's super cool. Even if you're worried about going to coming up to the church um, when there's a lot of people here, come up during the day, you know, um, avoid like the noon mass if you have to, if that's what you're worried about. Come check out those relics, say a little prayer, 
Um, it's really, really neat. Um, so again, just wanted to, to plug that. Thank you all so much uh, for the opportunity to, to kind of be in your homes this evening and uh, looking forward to a wonderful year. Have a really, really great night. Peace.